the top-ranked Baylor Lady Bears and the Texas Longhorns tonight from the Irwin Center. Baylor has been the dominant force in the Big 12, eight straight regular season titles, and they are working on a ninth, and they have taken over this rivalry with their neighbors just 102 miles apart, these two schools. The Longhorns still lead the series, but in the last decade, it has been all Baylor. They have won 18 of the last 19 meetings. So it's a big night for the Longhorns. Their head coach, Karen Aston, just a moment ago in the locker room. Again, let's make sure that we get the ball stopped okay, at the three-point line. I don't think we have to run at them. But again, know that they're always trying to get themselves in a two-on-one. So we got to keep it 100, right? 100. All right, let's go. Yeah, let's go. Looking for the maximum effort from her Longhorns as they try and beat the number one ranked team in the country for the first time in 15 years. You got to go back to the days of Jody Conrad the last time they took down the top team. If they're going to get that done tonight, Debbie, they're going to have to handle perhaps the best front court in the nation. Hey, listen, this Baylor team is primed to win a national championship. They have everything they need, and tonight is one piece in the puzzle for them against Texas, who presents the greatest opportunity to defeat them and on the inside they have one of the best low post combinations in the entire country at nearly 28 points a game and 14 rebounds 6-7 Kalani Brown and 6-4 Lauren Cox are a tremendous tandem on the inside this team leads the nation in block shots Kalani Brown and Lauren Cox can score in the paint on one end of the floor and they can dominate the defensive end at the rim on the other end they have won 11 straight since their only loss to Stanford back in December. Including tonight, nine games left on the schedule and Baylor will be heavily favored in all of those as they try and run the table and perhaps lock down the number one overall seed for the NCAA tournament as their head coach Kim Mulkey looks on. Winners of two national championships in 05 and 2012. And they'll swing it around the perimeter and the first look is from Chloe Jackson, their transfer at the point. Now there's a look at the Longhorn starter. Should Sutton runs the show for them. They're gonna need a big effort from Joyner Holmes and Jatari White inside. They've got the size to try and combat Bailey. They've got size, they've got some depth, they've got some speed on the perimeter. All things that you'll need to be able to take down the number one team. With the shot clock winding down, the left-hander from White won't go on a shot clock violation. It's the top field goal percentage defense in the country, these Baylor Lady Bears, with their starting five, including Juicy Landrum back in the lineup tonight after she missed the last game with an ankle injury, a foot injury, excuse me. The last time down, they doubled the low block post to post, which means they left Lauren Cox. Backdoor cut, and the pass is taken away. Shook Sutton on the move. Pull up in the paint. Bounces right out to Kalani Brown. This is a Baylor team that will work to establish the baseline. They will get the ball inside to Kalani Brown. They do a terrific job of understanding their role, especially the perimeter. Landrum with the pull up. They love that 15 footer right there at the free throw line. Neither one of these teams are exceptional outside the arc. Baylor as a team, not exceptional shooting the three. They do have a couple of players that are capable, but they only make three a game. Part of the reason why they are so good getting the ball inside to their bigs. With a resume that already includes a win over UConn and South Carolina. And Danny Williams hits for three to open the scoring. And Danny Williams would be one of those players for Texas capable of knocking down the triple. You've got to come with a long closeout and high hands. Make her put it on the floor. They are packing the defenders into the paint right now are the Longhorns as Dee Dee Richards knocks one in. Dee Dee Richards only averages six points a game, so she's the least likely option on the floor. That's why she's going to be open tonight. Joyner Holmes with the trail three over Lauren Cox. One of the top shot blockers in the country. 
So, Lauren, so Joyner Holmes has made her fourth triple of the season, but that's the kind of effort you have to have if you're going to beat the number one team. You're going to have to have others do a few, a few things they're not accustomed to because Baylor's going to make them uncomfortable and make them do take shots that Baylor wants them to take. You mentioned field goal percentage defense, Beth. The last three years, they've been number one in that category. It's a big part of the DNA, as is turnovers for easy scoring opportunities off their defense. Dee Dee Richards got the strip and then ends up with the ball for the lay-in. And a big night for Texas. They are still in search of a resume win, and this would certainly qualify. The latest bracketology has them at a seven seed which would mean they'd be on the road for the first and second rounds. Yeah, they're in desperate need of a signature win so they can get back in the conversation to host. Baylor will turn it over. This is just a nice job of strong dribble paint penetration to the paint, and Holmes, with confidence, hits the trail three. Now, if Jordan Holmes can do that consistently, you're talking about a whole different basketball team for Texas because she is dominant on the interior. She's quick off the bounce from the high post area, and she can rebound. She has an opportunity tonight, too, against this front line to really make a statement about where she and the Longhorns are headed in the second half of the season, and Sutton hits another triple. Three triples early as a team. Texas averages five. They're 0 for 3, Debbie, from inside the line. 3 for 3 from beyond it. Cox with the spin. Tough shot. Brown offensive rebound. Chloe Jackson had it deflected. Texas able to run. Another strip for Richard. So quick with the hands. And Holmes with a nice hustle back defensively. Dede Richards had a layup. Look at the handles for Joyner, trying to scoop it up around Cox. And here comes Baylor with a quick counter. So this tempo right here would favor Texas, but you want to make Kalani Brown and Lauren Cox run. You want to make them run rim to rim, make them change direction, make them move their feet all game. And you want to try and score right before they can establish themselves. If there was a concern for Karen Aston, and all their preparation, she says, it still comes down to the fact you've got to score with Baylor to beat Baylor. Dee Richards hot early. It's not pretty, but it goes in. She's already at her game average. Six points here in the first five minutes. Williams. Here comes Baylor again. Got to make a good decision in transition because you can always wait for Kalani Brown to get to the block. Richards is the only player to score for Baylor. The rest of the team is 0 for 5 and missed badly there. Texas, when they're able to push, is able to find some triples. They've got nine all from outside the arc. Shook Sutton from deep. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by McDonald's. Number one ranked Baylor and Kim Mulkey on the road tonight in Texas. They've been a terrific team in first quarters throughout the year. But right now, Dee Dee Richards has all three of their baskets. And Kalani Brown and Lauren Cox have combined for just one shot. For Mulkey's bunch, number three all time career winning percentage. Only Gino and Leon Barmore have done it better than Kim. Quite remarkable career with two national championships at Baylor. Sutton picked up the pivot foot there. Kim Mulkey, a finalist for Naismith. It's just a matter of time where yeah. she'll be able to take her Baylor Lady Bears crew up to Springfield, Mass. One day, 
soon, I believe. This year might be the year. That's going to be a kick. Here's the thing with Baylor right now, right? All the success, but in recent years, they haven't been to a Final Four in seven seasons. So that's something that players have come and gone without having that trip. They talk about that openly. They say, hey, we've got to end that. And they are in prime position to build towards that this year. Nine consecutive regular season championships. And you look at Kalani Brown, she's only lost two Big 12 games her career. Won her freshman year and won her sophomore year. The one potential de hurdle, right, Debbie, is they don't have a regional in their area. They will have to go to Chicago, Portland, Albany, or Greensboro. Well, that's unfortunate. And as a number one seed, the floater is good. And they're going to get a foul, too, a block. So a trip to the free throw line coming up right here for Moon Urson. The play starts outside the lower defensive box. Danny Williams does not get there in time. It has, the restricted area does come into play, but she was outside of that. Good call by the official. And how about Moon? What a terrific job she did in her first start in the last game. She was five for six from yeah. the floor. 12 points in their big win against Texas Tech. They are beating Big 12 opponents by an average of 24 points per game. And Beth, look right here, number 12 in black. This is where she's most valuable to Baylor. Her on-ball defense was outstanding against Texas Tech. Sometimes players worry about the stats too much and don't pay attention to the other areas that you can add value. Moon understands her role. She's going to make it really tough on Suge Sutton here in the next few minutes. All nine of Texas's points, three-pointers. They do not have a two-point basket yet. Aborowa right now has the matchup with Brown. And I think sometimes Kalani's got to work a little harder for position as well. Still does not have a shot under three minutes here in the first quarter. Kalani, the All-American last year's Big 12 Player of the Year, 15 points per game, and Moon Urson's feeling it right now. Wait a second, Moon's going to become an offensive player for Kim Mulkey? <laughs> Uh-oh. That's just another piece of the puzzle on their way to a national championship, honestly. You know, they, they don't the shoot most the of her opportunity, right? Yeah, exactly. A little, getting a little confidence from a little more PT. I'll tell you what, if I ever need security, I'm going to try to hire Moon. She'd be my first choice. Well, that's one of the things that makes her a good on-ball defender, right? You're not going to knock her around trying to get to the rim. Brown affected that shot. This is the top shot-blocking team in the country at seven per game. Lauren Cox off the window, and Beautiful. Lauren's got her first bucket and the quick timeout for Karen Aston. To me, a turnaround jumper off the glass is as beautiful as a three on Baylor on a 9-0 run. Thirteen to nine Baylor, and we thought it might be Brown and Cox, but instead it's Dee Dee and Moon right now <laughs> running the show and a 9-0 run. Uh, take a look at Moon Urson off the bench. She only needs one name. We're just going to call her Moon from now on. She's been terrific. Look at that beautiful mid-range jump shot. And then Lauren Cox, I don't think it gets any prettier than that. They've hit four of their last five shots. And Texas has gone cold. I think a really good substitution by Karen Aston to get Destiny Littleton in. I think that kid is set for a big game. She's due. She shoots the three, she can go off the bounce a little, she can get to the free throw line. Number four in white, just entered the game. Here's another one of those 15 footers from up top. That's Chloe Jackson. And Texas shooting just 25% now in this first quarter. Holmes, uh, she got one three out there. The second one was a bit much. You know, Texas has got to be a little bit more patient and you've got to switch sides of the floor. Look, Baylor can lock in on one side. They'll load up, and with their shot blocking ability, if you don't make their bigs move, it's going to be really tough to find some space. Urson will get the assist to D.D. E. Richards. 13-0 run, and Texas has missed its last seven shots at this end of the floor. White.
tipped back out by Holmes. Look how quickly they close out on the perimeters. Perimeter shooters trying to lob it over the top, and they're going to get a foul on Baylor. Well, we got a Saturday double dip for you on ESPN, and that includes the number one team on the men's side, Tennessee and Florida, and then the rematch, number two versus number three, Duke. One at Cameron, can Virginia win in Charlottesville? Saturday night at 6 Eastern on ESPN and streaming live on your app. I don't think there's a more entertaining college basketball on the schedule than Saturday than Duke and Virginia. Richards can't get it to go. Into the corner, three, Danny Williams. Good job. their baskets triples in the first. Really good job by Shook Sutton. She gets the basketball in her hands and her eyes go immediately to the rim. Baylor gets one possession here. Person short, cock, second chance, got it. A lead for Baylor without Kalani Brown even attempting a shot. A total team effort and a seven point advantage on the road. Hoops or hoops, college or pro. Oh, wow. Take it from the people who know. Now that's a highlight show. ESPN's experts switch sidelines. It's the crossover beginning tomorrow on ESPN. Nineteen to twelve, top rank Baylor with the lead tonight on the road against Texas. And from some new sources, Didi Richards and Moon Urson. They're minus three where they're on the bench. They're plus ten when Moon's in the game, and she's off to a good start. They haven't needed Kalani Brown yet. Let's see if they try and get her a quick touch and a score. Texas has four field goals, all of them triples. They don't have a two-pointer yet. Let's see if Texas will move the ball a little bit. And now that they put Charlie Collier in the game at 6'5", she's a freshman, and she's a solid offensive weapon on the block inside. Certainly part of their depth. Collier off the mark. There's Moon with a rebound. This is Chloe Jackson, seventh in the country at six assists per game. Nice backdoor cut, Moon Urson again, assisted by Lauren Cox. If you ball watch on the weak side and you have no idea where Baylor is, you're making a huge mistake because they're not, you have to stretch all the way to the three-point line. You should have a foot in the paint already on the weak side. Lauren Cox is outstanding, passing out of the post. Close to 70 assists on the season for Lauren. 71% of Baylor's baskets are assisted. That is a very high percentage. Sutton with the floater, and there's their first two-pointer of the night. Back to within a touchdown. Just a minute gone here in the second quarter. Beth Mullins along with Debbie Antonelli in our big Monday matchup. Let's see if they get it back to Brown. She is a pick and roll, Kalani Brown. She is not going to pop. Turning around and drawing the foul on Collier. We've got Karen Aston wired for you tonight on the Texas bench. Hey, we have one offensive rebound. One. We don't even look like we're trying to rebound, but if you'll move it side to side, you'll have better position. You'll need to get the ball moving side to side. Every time you have done that or we have penetrated in here, we've gotten really good looks. That's what I could say. Move the ball to the side. Change sides of the floor. You gotta switch. You gotta move the ball. Not just for offensive rebound. It's a great point by Karen Aston. They've missed 11 shots and only rebounded one. However, their transition defense has been excellent. So you give and take, it's one or the other. Either you go to the glass or you get back. If I'm playing Baylor, I'm going to get back in transition defense and make them score against my set D. Karen now in her seventh season with a, a trip to the Elite Eight and three times to the Sweet 16 for Texas. She 
was an assistant here with Jody Conrad in their final four trip in 03, and that pass is picked off. And that was too easy for Baylor and a trip to the line for Chloe Jackson. Well, Charlie Collier was confused from the beginning because she was going to set a screen across the lane for Joyner Holmes when she was supposed to be setting an on-ball screen. And so therefore, on trying to reverse the basketball, it's a great pick by Chloe Jackson. Grad transfer, her first stop was at NC State, then a couple of years at LSU. She's already scored 1,000 points in her career. And then due to the dismissal last fall of their returning point guard, Alexis Morris, Chloe moved over to the point and has been terrific for Baylor running the show this year. Here she is defending on Sutton. Joyner Holmes trying to bury the defender down low. And Joyner walked with it. You can get happy feet going against the top shot blocking team in the country, right? I mean, you know they're lurking. However, with Lauren Cox on the bench, you don't have to worry about somebody coming over from the weak side. Weak side rebound, another second chance for Baylor. Queen Egbo, the freshman out of Houston at 6-3. Another three attempt. Holmes tried to tip it up and in. If you've got to hesitate and think, should I or shouldn't I, and you're not a three-point shooter, the answer is no. That, that's her first three attempt of the entire season right there. Here's Holmes. Uh-oh, watch out. Moon making the play again. Seventh turnover for Texas. And Moon with the triple. <laughs> I thought her greatest impact was going to be on the ball defensively. I had no idea she was going to put this kind of offensive performance together, building off her five for six from the floor against Texas Tech. They are finding even more depth. Down on the deck for the loose ball. And there's your held ball, possession arrow to Baylor. Watch the push right here, and Moon runs to the corner, gets her feet set under her shoulders. Beautiful follow through, and that's called flat out work. Putting the time in, shooting the basketball, getting rewarded for your effort, your extra effort when no one's watching, and you're in the practice facility by yourself. She's just earning minutes right now. She averages about 11 per game, but got the start against Texas Tech, and now Plenty of time here in the first half tonight. She's their leading scorer with 10 points on four or five shooting. Big block down low, Jada Underwood got it. Two on two for Texas. Sutton tried to cross and got stripped. Baylor does not give up easy baskets. Quick hands in transition for the Baylor guards. And Melissa Smith, the 6'2 freshman, with the nice turnaround. Boy, they have a lot of excitement about Melissa Smith in that program, about what she can do and where she can take her game. When Kalani Brown graduates, Smith moves in there with Cox. Ballers now doubled up Texas. Sutton with the counter three. That's their fifth of the ball game. Chitauri White did an excellent job screening at the top to give Shook Sutton time to get that three off. Kalani Brown back out on the floor, spins into the double team and gets it taken away. Good help from Texas. Underwood and the blocking foul will be called. Kalani Brown likes to go over that right shoulder and they take that away. There's the foul. And then look at the screen by Chitauri White. Takes Chloe Jackson completely out of the play. First foul on Jackson, just the third team foul.
So far, Baylor goes under everything. I think you can go under everything except for with Danny Williams. Danny comes off the dribble. Nice touch by Baylor, 10 on the shot clock. Joyner Holmes just can't catch in space where she has room to operate. She's so good from that high post with that one dribble move as well. Sutton with the nice hesitation and Lauren Cox with the hang time to knock it loose. And then a bad pass from Juicy Landrum. 28-17 Baylor, we'll get to know the Bears and their all-name team when we come back. I think it's, it's cool to have an all-name team. I picked up the nickname Juicy when I was a baby. Yeah, because I was a chubby baby. I used to just wobble around and eat a lot of food. Yes, I was born named Queen Egba. My given name is Honesty. The nickname Moon came about when I was a baby. I was born and my auntie said, oh, look at the moon because I had a moon head. I always loved it. <laughs> Today in Shoot Around, as we take a look at Moon, who's having another fantastic game. Today in Shoot Around, Coach Mulkey yells out, who was guarding Honesty on that cut? And I wanted to yell out, tell the truth. <laughs> Be honest. <laughs> I just thought it was kind of funny because she was yelling Trinity and she was talking about Moon. And just juicy back in the lineup tonight. Danny Williams with another triple. I'm she's got right. nine. She's been the bright spot for Texas. Just one other thing, Beth. I'm all right calling about her nicknames as long as their mothers don't mind. They have gotten out to this lead without really Kalani Brown being a part of it. She has not attempted a shot yet, and they're gonna call a travel right there. But because of Moon, and because of Dee Dee and, Lo and uh, Cox, they've picked up the slack. She is doing it on the glass. She's got five rebounds here in the first well, half. And here's the thing, Kalani is not frustrated at all. She's letting the game come to her, which is a very mature thing. She realizes she's on the top of every scouting report. The game plan is to take her away. Her teammates are picking up the slack, which is a great sign of maturity for Baylor overall. Sutton, just their second two-pointer of the game. And they are on an 8-0 run right now, getting right back in it. This is the best rebounding team in the country, and they get another one there. Well, by offensive rebounding percentage, these are two of the top ten according to, according to her hoop stats. Another offensive rebound, and they cash it in. Offensive rebounding percentage means it's the percentage of shots that you miss that you offensive rebound. And when you have a number like Mississippi State at 50%, that is incredibly high. That's number one according to her hoop stats. Mississippi State undefeated in the SEC right now. That's another team that is in the hunt for a number one seed in the NCAA tournament. Of course, they've been in the championship game the last two years. How about more wired for you right now from Karen Aston? We are not making very many shots out here with our post players. I'm just being real. Like, we need to get the ball moving. We're shooting 28%. We have two rebounds. Too, because our post players are out here the whole day. Karen, we're in the microphone for us tonight. Oi! Trying to pull off the upset. It's been a long time since they've beaten a top-ranked team. And they're trying to make this a rivalry again. It's been dominated over the last decade by Baylor. Jatari White hits the jumper and then sprinted to get ahead of Kalani Brown. And one opportunity there for Juicy. Watch this right here. This is a little bit of a short pop by Chitari. She doesn't go all the way to the paint because that's where Kalani Brown is. So watch the sprint. She is running as fast as she can to get ahead of Kalani Brown to beat her to the spot. And there you see a nice ball reversal and transition and a great time to attack the rim. Sutton 
trying to push tempo. Holmes, they brought a double on her, tip ball, and they turn it over, and then Joyner commits the foul. Joyner has been quiet tonight as well. Just one for five from the floor with three turnovers. I think Joyner looks like she's playing in too much of a hurry. You know, just mm -hmm. take a breath, catch the ball, read, assess, and then make your move. Richards, another one of those 15 footers that won't go. And again, the offensive rebound. A lot of standing around. There's a nice basket cut by Dee Dee Richards. Jackson, no. And over the back goes Richards. Under two minutes to go here in the first half. Coming up on the E-Trade Halftime Report. A crazy week in women's basketball. And we'll also check out the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame inductees. Here's a member of the HOF right there, Jody Conrad. The national championship coach here for Texas. 900 wins at Texas. One of the all-time greats. We had a new class that'll be going into the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame. Coming up later this spring. So Texas has just got to stop turning the ball over. You know, they're turning it over at a very high rate. They've got 11 early, yet they only trail by eight. Baylor has not really taken advantage of the turnovers. They have turned it over on a third of their possessions here in the first half, and yet they can chip away at the deficit right here again. So this is where you really got to execute. That pass is too long against an overplaying team. Moon, short, another opportunity. That's a turnover you just can't make. That's three in a row the last three times. Shook Sutton knows better than that. That pass is too long. Chloe Jackson playing up the line. And that's the difference right now. Eight second chance points in a 10 point game here. Trying to go back inside, White. Got her body into Cox, and up and good. You want to get right into the chest of the shot blocker if you can. Foul on the pass inside, that'll be on White. Again, Jatari White does a nice job. A little step through move right here, and then she turns and sprints. Chloe Jackson up the line. Good finish by Moon Urson. Kalani Brown, 75% on the year from the free throw line. And Kalani with 30 seconds left in the half has her first point. Beth, for as physical as the play has been on the block, Jatori White picking up that foul. She's done a very good job tonight, really making it difficult on Kalani Brown. 10 point lead. Let's see if Baylor holds for one here. Shot clock is off. You gotta really start moving and start cutting. Urson defending on Sutton. Plays too slow developing. Still out beyond the arc. Trying to find some space. Got it through the shot blockers and down. Wow, what a triple. Over 6'7 six, and 6'4, six, Shug Sutton, the leading scorer for Texas, gives them some momentum going into the locker room. Seven first half triples, none bigger than this one. And we got a game in Austin. Now, after the break, Maria, Andy, and Rebecca in the studio. She is only America's halftime sweetheart, the Red Panda, with us tonight in Austin, Texas. 
It's Baylor, number one in the nation for the first time in six years. They are back on top, and they have the 36-29 lead over Texas. Shug Sutton with a big three at the buzzer. Otherwise, this would be a double-digit lead, and Kalani Brown does not have a shot attempt yet. I know, isn't it amazing that Baylor can have this cushion at half without Kalani being a factor scoring? Of course, Kalani's a factor with her presence on the floor because she draws so much attention. But Kalani posting up hard and working hard creates space and option for her teammates like Moon Urson with 12 points off the bench in 12 minutes of play for Kim Mulkey's team. They outscored Texas from the bench 14 to zip, but Moon, her job is to pressure the basketball, and she's done that very well, but she's also done this, spot up and knock down open jump shots to help Baylor have a halftime lead. 12 points in 12 minutes for Moon. She's a point shy of her career high. Brown's two points from the free throw line. Texas, disaster inside the line, but shooting it real well outside the arc through that first half of play. Lady Bears have won 18 of the last 19 meetings in this rivalry. As Joyner Holmes hits from the baseline, they are in the driver's seat right now for a ninth consecutive Big 12 regular season championship, unless the Horns can rattle them here in the second half. Tough shot, and it gets up and in for Dee Dee Richards. How about two pieces of great execution coming out of the locker room? Texas, I love that set where they get the curl by Danny Williams, they get Lauren Cox to help, and then Joyner Holmes just short pops to the short corner. That's the kind of execution you have to have if you're gonna beat the number one team in the country. Joyner Holmes just two for six in that first half, but she's going to work here. You see how she took her time. Let the cut go through, and then she penetrates. That one dribble from the high post is all she needs. Lauren Cox for three. Okay, Beth, if we're going to start heating up for some offense, you know I'm down for that. Mm -hmm. it's 11th triple of the season for Lauren Cox. The concerted effort here by Texas to try and get Joyner Holmes fired up. On the switch here, Sutton gets it back to Jakari White. Well, that's where Shirt Sutton's got to lead the play. You got Kalani Brown on you, you got to pull her away from the basket and make something happen. Brown, offensive rebound. That's been another big story for Baylor. And it all started with the long outlet from Lauren Cox to Juicy to get it going. Baylor is such a good transition offensive team because they don't dribble. They advance past the ball at the floor and they run. Their wings run the floor hard every time. Second foul on Jatari White. Kalani three for three from the line and they have stretched the advantage. I'd go right back to that high post with uh, Lauren Cox defending Joyner Holmes. Danny Williams off the curl, fouled on the shot. A couple of free throws coming for Danny. Well, they didn't transfer from Texas A&M. Sorry, Beth. They did not run Danny Williams off of any curls in the first half. It's a great adjustment by Karen Aston. We got a men's double header for you on Saturday, and that includes number one ranked Tennessee. They'll be taking on Florida, and then it's Duke, Virginia. Saturday night, the rematch. Duke won the first matchup. That'll be on ESPN, streaming live on your ESPN app. I got Kyle Guy and Ty Jerome in that one winning. I got Virginia winning at home. Brown, back to back. Working inside. Impossible to defend when you allow her to get that deep. Wrap around Holmes. Okay, I like it, Coach Aston. How about some isolation for Joyner Holmes? I bet Joyner Holmes was challenged at halftime. Mm -hmm. We'll go to you if you're going to bring the motor and the energy, and she's brought it here to start the second half. Three for three here in this third quarter.
Couple of skip passes and that one into the bench. Watch this right here, calls for the post up, quickly attacks the shot blocker to the other side of the rim. And then when you allow Kalani Brown to run to that spot on the floor, forget about it. Two feet in the paint, two points. Holmes coming out top to get it. She's playing with a lot of confidence right now. I'd call her number again. She'll pull up from the elbow. Ricochets out to Bill. Moon Urson having an impact right away. I mean, making shots, defending her position, and then making a winning play like that, crashing the glass. Then a nice slash to a bucket. And Moon's going to the free throw line and a couple of attempts to get a new career high. Watch the rebound from the weak side. Look how high Moon gets up in the air to rebound. That's the 11th award, Debbie, for Baylor tonight. And this free throw to tie her career high. 13 points in 13 minutes. I'll tell you what, Coach Murphy started the season this year without a true point guard. But you get this kind of guard play out of Moon Urson off the bench and Chloe Jackson, you don't really need a true point guard. New career high, they are plus 15 with Moon in the game tonight. And a 13 point lead. Got to get over that screening action with Danny Williams. Good job by Dee Dee Richards. And then there's another poke and a steal. And then Holmes going to be whistled for the foul. Dee does a great job of digging in right here on the dribble. She just feels the rhythm of the bounce by Holmes and digs in and steals it. That would be her fourth steal yep. of the game. And the tenth tonight for Baylor. Danger zone right here for Texas. Cannot let this get too far away. Moon got a triple. I mean, do you think she was on the scouting report? No. <laughs> she will be there next game. Got the start last week again, or in their last game against Texas Tech, 12 points. And even better here tonight. Yeah, the reason why she started was because Juicy Landrum needed a rest. And she had a foot problem. And Juicy's been playing 37 and a half minutes a game in Big 12 play. I think Moon's development here is going to allow Juicy to get a little more rest, which helps the depth of Baylor overall as you get deeper into February, making your climb to March. Jatari White with the bucket and the quick timeout. Baylor in control. Baylor's Dee Dee Richards, you started out in gymnastics and karate. What okay. happened? Well, I ended up growing about seven inches in one summer and I outgrew the bar in gymnastics. So like when I would swing, I'd slap my feet on the ground. When you're done with basketball, what do you want to do? I want to be a model. She should be. Strike a pose. <laughs> Thank you, Dee Dee Richards. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Going beyond the bucket with Holly and Dee Dee. Look at the job that those three have been doing, and Dee Dee in particular, 10 points, four assists, four steals tonight. And Moon Erson was 17 off the bench. Good repost by Kalani. Strong with it. Post the window. Pass it back, repost, get a little deeper. on the shot clock and the switch Richards with Williams the spin the scoop and the shot clock violation They're coming off a timeout not a good offensive possession for Texas
Kalani Brown working for position. This is what the big girl does on a repost. Puts it on the floor, makes a little contact, puts it off the window. Okay, this is not, we're, we're all right. Yeah, no. But the problem is we've given up like nine points in transition. Dig a little bit. Everybody dig a little bit. Beat people to cuts. Don't rest. You get too tired to play, tell me, and you can rest over here. Wiretown from Coach Karen Aston. The Texas Longhorns find themselves down 16 here, under five to go in the third. They have dropped 18 of the last 19 meetings to Baylor. As the Lady Bears come in here, winners of 32 consecutive conference games in a row. Lauren Cox has got to be able to knock down that shot or step in. She had some space. It doesn't have to be a three. Kalani Brown drew four white jerseys in the paint. And Kalani Brown's a willing passer, Beth. She has not forced one shot tonight. She didn't take a shot in the first half, but she's got nine points in the last six minutes for Baylor. Well, the one game that Baylor lost was to Stanford. We know Tara Vanderveer can put together a game plan, right? Kalani Brown only took seven shots in that game. That's one recipe for beating Baylor, but you can't turn the ball over. She's only taken three tonight. And that's a push off on the weak side. Gonna be a foul on Destiny Littleton. You gotta start getting some stops here and be productive on the other end. And I look at Baylor, their body language is good. They clap, they talk, they communicate. Texas doesn't really say anything to each other. Chloe Jackson scoops it up and in. And Jackson averaged 23 points a game last year at LSU. She's a scorer. Brown with a block and it'll go to Baylor. This is a beautiful scoop shot. Look at all the attention Kalani draws. So now you've got to recover to the perimeter on a penetrator. So when you do that, knowing personnel, you can't come with a long closeout on Chloe Jackson. She's not a threat to shoot the three. You gotta guard her to penetrate. She may be one of the biggest moves in the college game this year. Coming over from LSU. That's a good, uh, Michelle Vogel's got a good story on uh, ESPN.com. Good vocal foul on Twitter about Chloe talking about, I wanted the challenge of stepping up to the top. I wanted the opportunity to fight for a spot on this team and to possibly play for a national championship. And she's even made the move from shooter to point. Well, she has it all right there in front of her. I mean, her decision to come to Baylor, obviously those options are still on the table for her with the way the season is going. I think this is a Final Four team. I think they would have been a Final Four team last year if Christy Wallace didn't get hurt late in the season. Their point guard, who was tremendous last season for Baylor. It's been heartbreak in the Elite Eight the last uh, handful of years as Moon adds to her career high. She's got 19. Averaging four points per game coming in. White and Brown will be called for the foul. Good job in transition. Look at all the white jerseys in the paint. No defender on her there for the pull up. So worried about Kalani Brown. You've got to sprint back. And that's what I'm talking about. The Baylor wings run the floor. This is the third free throw attempt of the night for Texas. And they have yet to hit one. They're over at the line. They have some work to do in front of them if they want their first win against a top-ranked team since 2004. They've lost 11 straight, six of those to Baylor when they were 
ranked number one for many years when Odyssey Sims and Brittany Griner were around, and a chance for a three-point play on the drive. This is a tremendous acceleration by Chloe Jackson. And Lauren Jackson does a great job with a nice little handoff. You see Joyner Holmes showing a little bit of help, but that is a set play that Kim Mulkey runs off the timeout, and we, you can see she loves it. Baylor trying to pull away here from Texas, approaching two minutes to go in the third. White with the land. Nice step through. Look at Kalani get ahead of the defense. Found by Jackson. That's a sprint right there. She gets one or two of those buckets a game because she runs so hard. She has come alive here all four for four, I should say now, in this quarter, 11 points. White, won't go. Now a rebound away from the double-double. I enjoyed Baylor's shoot-around this morning because it was high energy, it was very detailed, it was very game situational. I thought Kim Mulkey set the tone early with her club about what she expected and what were two or three things they absolutely had to do. She didn't give them ten. She made it clear. White trying to get around Brown. There's the double-double for Lauren Cox, the fourth of the season. Jackson lost it out of bounds. Well, for the sixth straight year, the college basketball NBA crossover comes your way on ESPN. The action on Tuesday and Wednesday night, the Reese's 2019 crossover on ESPN, also streaming live on the ESPN app. Well, there's a couple of interesting combinations there that I can't wait to listen to. I can't wait to hear Dickie V and Hubie Brown. How about that? I mean, look at the experience of that group. Hubie Brown is my all-time favorite basketball analyst. Don't be selling Dan Shulman and Allison Williams short, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Allison would be with that crew as well. That's yeah. pretty good. <laughs> good luck, Allison, getting anything in on that game. <laughs> Got Phyllis and Burke, you got Rebecca Lobo on the crossover. John Shandy, Dave Pash, just to name a few. The cast of thousands on Tuesday and Wednesday night. Jackson using the Lauren Cox screen, gets close to the rim. Second chance, no. Good if it goes. Tipped up, no good. <laughs> Moon <laughs> almost had the play of the night. <laughs> we told you 6'7 could motor, that she could run, that she could fill the middle. She gets ahead of the defense, ahead of the ball, gets an easy bucket. Oh, a lot of the little longhorns out to uh, Boogie in there during the, the break as we get set for the start of the fourth quarter and a 21-point lead for Baylor over Texas. And uh, Jody Conrad's in the house with us tonight, Hall of Famer. And she has some new friends with her now in the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame. Congratulations to this group, Beth Bass, Joan Cronin, Norlin Finch, Tisha Pinachero, and Ruth Riley, along with Val Still. A fabulous group going into the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame. Carolyn Bushrodi, the veteran, yeah. gets into that, gla that class. Pretty special group. Yeah. You'll notice contributors and players, no coaches on Interesting. Yeah, I, I, think, I, I think it's a miss not to have Paul Sanders with the longtime coach at Western Kentucky. Three Final Fours, yeah. Jimmy junior, he's college, next year's group. junior College National yeah. Championship. He should be in the Hall of Fame. I voted for him. We're waiting to see, too, if Kim Mulkey might be heading to the Naismith Hall of Fame. She is up for that honor again this year. We'll find out what the men's final four, right? They make that announcement? Yeah, yes. And you know what? Coach Mulkey actually has credentials to go in as a player or a coach. Yes. He's got two titles as a player at La Tech. Gold medal. 
two titles at Baylor and also what, what an assist for one with Leon assistant. Barmore at La Tech. Yep. You know, uh, I think she's the Bill Self of the Big 12 and 11 oh, side. Oh, that's she's won nine in a row. He's won 14. That's what they're going. She's going for nine. I Go, think. Going for nine in a no, row. I think nine overall. Nine. We might have a graphic on that. Let's see. Working it inside, and the lay-in is good. Nabarroa. Nice. Offensive rebound and a foul. Well, it, it's been Baylor's conference here. You're right. Dominating the Big 12. Eight straight Big 12 regular season titles. I'm sorry, what? Uh, uh, they won nine overall. Regular season conference wins. They've won seven of the last eight Big 12 tournaments. And indeed, the Bamsterino was right. Eight straight for Baylor. 14 <laughs> straight for the Kansas men. That is in, that's in jeopardy this year. Big 12's got Big 12. some good teams near the top fighting Rock Chalk Jayhawk. A win tonight for Baylor. They're three games clear of the rest of the conference with eight games remaining on the slate. You think Kim Mulkey uh, falls asleep every night worrying about winning the Big 12 championship or worrying about going, going to the Final Four? I'm going to guess the Final Four. I think the Big 12 would take care of itself if they are a Final Four contender. Right? I, I agree. Although I would guess even more so, Kim worries about winning a national championship. Look at that. already been there. Look at that outlet pass. Sorry, Beth. That's why Texas has a hard time sending anybody to the glass because Baylor runs so hard and they advance past the basketball, which is much faster to all you point guards out there that like to dribble the air out of the ball. Why did you look at me when you made that Because I know you like to dribble. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Look at that. That ball is ahead of three Texas players. That's over the head three-quarter court. That's not a baseball pass. And you see That's that impressive. patch on, you see that patch on Lauren Cox's arm? Yeah, she's you know, got it wrapped up there, right? That's her court that she wears, so she has juvenile diabetes. She's quite an inspiration. Scores. Yeah. She's got, she and uh, one of their athletic trainers, right? Keep an eye on that during yep. the game. She's got a Bluetooth on it, so uh, she checks her numbers before the game and at halftime. So, of course, when she was stretching, I asked her what she had for pregame. She had chicken Alfredo. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty good choice. I don't know, pasta. Get those cards. The pull-up is good from Juicy. Balanced attack tonight, scoring inside, scoring out, in transition, with offensive rebounds and second chances. Showing us why they are the number one ranked team in the country with a very good chance of staying there the rest of the season and into the NCAA tournament. And Lauren Cox pointing where she wants the ball, so she can set a screen. Kalani. Looked like a tired shot right there. She'll get back inside closer to the bucket. Shot clock did not reset. There's going to be an offensive foul on Lauren Cox. Lauren Cox, the top shot blocker in the Big 12 with only one block shot tonight. But look at the breakdown. I watched all her block shots this morning on Synergy, Beth. You know I love to do that. 51% of the shots she blocks into their transition game. That's a very high number. It's a block assist. Well, yeah, because it gets them gets going up the floor. Yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of younger players get enamored with the swat that the crowd loves when you send it into the fifth row, but that doesn't necessarily get your team two points the other way. You know, she's tremendous at helping, blocking shots. She rotates off her contact to get over and help out a block shot what made her the Big 12's Defensive Player of the Year last year. She'll have a chance uh, to win the National Award this year. I'm sure, you know, in order to win the WBCA Defensive Player of the Year Award, you have to be the Conference Defensive Player of the Year. I would think she'd be right up there. 
since Baylor has, again, one of the top defenses in the entire country. But Naismith also has a National Defensive Player of the Year award, and that criteria is a little bit different. She could win it from that as well. I don't know how I'm involved in two Defensive Player of the Year awards, it's, but I am. I mean, that takes everyone's breath away quick. <laughs> Pull up Danny Williams. Long rebound out to Chloe Jackson. Texas has to cycle through their options a little more quicker. Sutton right off the backboard. Trying to close the gap here down the stretch and make Baylor sweat a little bit. I think Baylor is pretty good playing with a lead. You know, because they execute. And this is where Kim Mulkey demands that they run and execute. And you know have the right people taking shots. Right? Got to have the right people taking shots. 65-50 Baylor with the lead over Texas. We may talk a little big picture when we come back. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by KFC. You can get any two chicken littles for $3. Sixty-five to fifty, Baylor with the lead over Texas. How about some hoop headlines for you? The first loss of the season for NC State, and it's to the dreaded Tar Heels. Oh. Debbie Antonelli, another <laughs> nice win for Sylvia Hatchell. We got Mississippi State and Oregon as a part of our doubleheader next Sunday for you. Mississippi State, Tennessee, and then Oregon and Stanford. It is a huge West Coast weekend coming up. Oregon, Oregon State, Stanford, and Cal will all tussle on Friday and Sunday. And Oregon right now in the driver's seat in the Pac-12. Well, Stanford and Cal actually split this weekend. Oregon and Oregon State have a big weekend coming up. And Stanford they all play plays. each other. They play the Oregon's Oregon States. Uh, well, yes. Stanford has to play them each once at home. Yep. As will Cal. I think there was a little basketball flu going on in Raleigh because the NC State men and women both had it. They couldn't make a shot. Mm, that's tough. Good in Tar Heels, though. They played really well. Harris King had a good game for them. Again, they're, they're playing themselves into the tournament and up the, yes, up the ladder. All right, so here comes Texas trying a little pressure here. Down to 13. And they get the turnover. How about Texas on the run right here? Good time to come out of the timeout. You had to anticipate the full court pressure was coming. Baylor's got to refine its focus here, the final four minutes. You can get Joyner Holmes going in the high post right there. I'd get her the ball right there and make her get make Lauren Cox defender. Danny Williams rattles one home. 9-0 run for Texas in a 10-point game. Jackson, the lob inside, Kalani Brown. Good find, and just keep in mind that Baylor only shoots as a team 65% from the free throw line. And Late game situations, the right people got a handle for them. Williams got another one. Wow. Two big triples by Danny Williams. And a takeaway. And here comes Texas. going to be called here on the Longhorns and two Texas players knocked heads diving for the loose ball 
Now, Audrey Warren is a freshman for Texas, not available in the game because she has concussion-like symptoms, this being the third game in a row. But how about Danny Williams? A couple of triples and then involved in a steal and a layup. That's eight consecutive points for Danny Williams for Texas. That is a big time three right there over the outstretched hands of Juicy Landrum. And then another one right here. Look at the closeout, hands down. Gave Danny Williams a little window. She takes advantage and she's exhausted. Checks out with 19 points. Eight points in under a minute for Danny. The largest lead for Baylor was 21 points in the third quarter with two minutes to play. Running a double at her. You can run a double from Dee Dee Richards. Dee Dee going off the bounce. Moon, ball fake, pull up. Brown weak side, and it's going to Texas. Shots a little bit harder when there's game pressure on you. Danny Williams will check back in, and the Longhorns undoubtedly will look her way. And Juicy Landrum trying checks, to hydrate. Juicy Landrum checks back in to guard Danny Williams. Big fourth quarter comeback here for Texas. Bucket here, you're looking at a two possession game. Both sides with fouls to give. And with timeouts. They are coming with their own pressure right here. Interesting. Possession arrows with the Longhorns. Williams defended by Juicy. Joyner Holmes off the dribble. Sutton working on Kalani Brown, missed it. Weak side, white, and a trip to the line. Just a reminder, in the next couple of nights for you, we got the ESPN crossover. College hoops, pro hoops. Tuesday and Wednesday night on ESPN, streaming live on your ESPN app. That is the fourth foul on D.D. Richards. What great toughness by Texas to get back in this and make it a competitive game. Now you've got some game pressure on Baylor. A six-point game. And a chance to, it's a two-possession game, as you said, Beth. 15 of the last 17 points. They'll bring some heat again. Well, Kim Mulkey is asking for a timeout, but she wants to advance the ball, but you can't do that until there's a minute left. I still think it's a good timeout. They've had a difficult time handling the full court pressure. Well, just before this run started, let's uh, check back in. We got a microphone on Karen Aston for you. She's wired. Y'all Yo, got to keep fighting. Biggest difference right now, and we have to show that we've got toughness. We've got to show a little more than what we have right now. Okay? What I mean by that is they're quicker to all the balls. We've got nobody rebounding on offense. And Danny Williams leading the charge. Juicy Landry. Hands down. Sticks the triple. Come back out again. Same thing. What a nice run here by Danny Williams to get her team back in it and then Shook Sutton with the steal. Williams with an easy lay in. 32 consecutive Big 12 wins for Baylor. They have dominated Texas in the last decade. And the Horns don't have an answer there for Kalani Brown. Ball never hit the ground, Beth. That's how you beat the pressure. You pass it. Terrific job by Coach Mulkey using that timeout. Holmes got to the bucket. Well, Texas' body language has completely changed. The energy that they're playing with. Foul out top. That's the fourth team foul on Texas. So the next one, they're shooting two. 
and this is where you miss a true point guard. Nice pump fake. Lauren Cox gets off her feet. Look at that finger roll by Joyner Holmes, the 6'3 junior. You got to make Chloe Jackson go left. She's very right handed. Sutton's not pushing her that way. Richards almost lost it out of bounds and then is pushed and fouled by Jada Underwood. They had Richards falling. Dee Dee Richards barely able to keep her balance and then I don't understand why the push. But however, I will say this. Dee Dee Richards is a 50% free throw shooter. This is what I'm talking about in the late game. Baylor, not a great free throw shooting team. It's the right person to foul. I'm not sure they wanted to foul, but it was the right person to foul. Yep. About one of two. Final minute here in Austin. Texas not clear what they're running. No. Karen Aston's going to have to burn a timeout. She's upset, and I don't blame her. How can you not know what you're supposed to be in at this point? They just lost 15 seconds. In a two-possession game right now. Well, tonight on Sports Center, following the West Virginia Texas Tech men's game that's coming up next, Kobe with his thoughts on the state of the NBA. Woj with all the latest, uh, apparently another deal on the table for Anthony Davis and the Lakers. And inside Bill Belichick's Super Bowl winning scheme as the Patriots win for the sixth time. Sports Center at 11 Eastern. That's coming up after College Hoops. You're looking for Danny Williams yeah, here? Yeah, I am. The first set that Texas ran off the halftime. They had a double low stack over here, and they ran Danny on a curl, and they got a short pop for Joyner Holmes. I love that set for them. They ran it once, and they scored on it. They have not beaten Baylor here at home since 2010. Baylor doesn't like the switch. They run, it, they run Danny Williams to the elevator door screen. Sutton fouled on the shot by Lauren Cox. L Lauren Cox is going nowhere. That's a tough angle to make that call. But they run Danny Williams through the elevator door screen and Shook Sutton just takes it left away from all the action. So Danny could have been a decoy. They were gonna substitute Moon Urson and then I think Kim Mulkey realized Moon is a worse free throw shooter than Dee Dee Richards is. So they have to keep the 50% free throw shooter in the game right here. Moon's only 33% from the line. Four for 12 on the season, but the way she's been shooting the ball lately, I might, I don't know, she's, she's a better ball handler. They'll have Richards as the inbounder here, but first Texas will call a timeout. So Texas with one more, Baylor with two. Let's flash it back to nine years ago, Baylor and Texas, the last time that the Horns beat Baylor here. Gail Gestenkors and Kim Mulkey on the sideline. Anisha Williams was big for the Horns. That was Brittany Griner's freshman year, Debbie. And then Ashley Fontenet, the baseline drive to draw the foul on Griner, and they were able to close it out. 2010, the last time Texas beat Baylor here in Austin. And the Lady Bears have won 18 of the last 19 meetings. They actually charged that timeout to Baylor, so Baylor could advance the ball. They want it on table side. You have an option. Advance it to half court. This was a 19-point game, by the way, with seven minutes to go, and now a 20-5 tear for Texas to make it a four-point game. It's the most points all season that Baylor has allowed in a single quarter of play. <laughs> and 
And they did put Moon into the game during that timeout, so she's going to the line for two. And you have, it's a good foul. Uh, it's a good job of knowing who to foul. Again, game pressure on Baylor to make shots. Only 12 free throw attempts in 20 games this year. She's only made four of them. Texas does not need a three, okay? If, if she makes this, it's still a two possession game. You can come down and get a quick score, put your full court pressure on, because it has bothered Baylor. One of two for Moon. And now Texas will call the timeout and advance to half court. Debbie hasn't said it yet, so I'll say it for her. Boy, do we miss the one and one in women's Oh basketball. my gosh, yes, we miss it badly. Two it free throws. I mean, if we went to- the fouls forthcoming. We went to four quarters to create more scoring Great opportunity. Idea. Right, to have two for ones and things like that. We can still keep the five fouls. You go to the line, you just go and shoot one on one. All right, so you're, you got it at midcourt here now. You're Texas. You don't need the three, you think? You go for the quick two or look for Danny Williams if it's open? Yeah, I think you look for the three. If you have it, you take it. If not, you look to drive it. Put some pressure on the referees for that matter. You know, drive it at the basket. See if you can get a foul and get to the free throw line. Texas does have the possession arrow, but no more timeouts. Baylor's got two of those. The other thing Texas likes to run late game is they like to run some horn set, one four high, and they like to run Joyner Holmes off that. That's something that they've done late game by my film work. I don't think Longhorns have any problem getting the ball into Joyner's hands here to give her a crack at it. Look for Baylor to switch all screens. Lauren Cox is on Holmes. That's who I'm looking for right here. Richards is the only one in foul trouble. She's got four. She's defending on the ball. Sutton off the cross. The kick out Holmes for three. Weak side. And Baylor comes away with it in a foul. I'm not sure that's exactly what Karen Aston wanted. There were several options off that play. Joyner Holmes, not necessarily known for a no. three, as a three-point shooter, but hit one earlier tonight. Just her fourth of the season. Destiny Littleton in the game for that purpose. I would have opted to go to number four in white since you were on that side of the floor and shook Sutton drove left. Again, Danny Williams, they defended her very well, did Baylor. Richards with the miss of the first. Fifty percent from the line. Still a two possession game. And now you gotta have a clue. Williams gets it up short. Rebound Jackson and a foul. You want to try to extend the game as much as you can. I would have tried for the quick two, try to get to the line, then foul, put them on the line. You know Baylor's not a good free throw shooting team. So when your offense takes too long in a late game situation to evolve through your options, with the way Baylor shoots free throws, something to think about. On a night where Moon Urson dropped 20, a new career high. A double-double for Lauren Cox. Jackson solid down the stretch. Holding off a furious fourth quarter rally for Texas. And a rally that will Apparently come up just shy for the Longhorns. What a valiant comeback. Just uh, just not enough, you know, too late. The, the press came on about four minutes to go.
point three has to come off the game clock. It's a rule, uh, you know, when there's a deflection or a tip. Can't substitute either for Texas because because it, you were checking the clock for <laughs> getting Kim Mulkey back in the coach's box. She's out at midcourt. Well, there's 1.9 on the clock. <laughs> really? Now you're going to ask Coach Mulkey to get I think she's been in the box the whole night. And now they are going to allow Texas to get a sub in. I don't understand why they're allowing a sub in. Maybe, maybe because there were, well, I think their the sub is allowed to come in. The inbound, and that'll do it. Baylor improves to 20 and 1, 10 and 0 in the league, and they beat Texas for the 19th time in 20 meetings and are in firm control of the Big 12 Conference trying to get a ninth consecutive regular season title. It was a well-balanced attack. Four players in double digits. Lauren Cox with a double-double. And a career-high 20 points for Moon. And that was enough to take down Texas. 74 to 68 our final coming up at 9 eastern we got more hoops for you iowa state and oklahoma on the men's side after the break maria andy and rebecca will be back in the studio thanks for being with us here in austin